What's going on, everyone? I am Jason Kaplan. And if you guys missed out on our episode last week, you missed out on our Counter-Strike tournament where we recapped it all happening. But this week, today, on Among the Elite, we're going to jump off the battle bus straight into the action from our Fortnite Elite competition. So why don't we just get straight into it? Why don't we just jump straight into a recap of our first day of the competition? Shooting, building, jumping and everything else in between while playing Fortnite was present during the first day of the Gamers Without Borders tournament. So let's see what happened during day one, shall we? 44 different duos answered the call and after a rather relaxed looting period with some minor skirmishes, match one gained some traction. After that, it just went downhill with teams fighting for survival using any means necessary. Still on height, Flick and Oss have gotten taken out. It's still tripping and flecking, but they're gonna give it up. Versa realizes this and hobs his way down as well. Tripping might land, no. Yes, they do, still going for it. Oh, what a shot from Versa! And another one too, four Ewans, but still pressure. Until finally, the most patient of hunters could pounce on their prey. 1v2 now, down on low ground against ETQ. Baylor's gonna come up though, and I think he's almost out of max. A little shot to the face, ETQ does a little bit of damage, but the chip will be enough, and yes, he's pretty much all out. There's a siphon down there, but he gets the flopper off, still potential. I don't think he can get his way back in the zone though. They're gonna hold him out as best as he can. I know there's cabbage back there. Three floppers used. I think that's it. And the game is over. ETQ and Wakey. Match two, on the other hand, started out a lot less casually, which was quite a painful experience for FHD and Yonks. Yonks is all the way on the side of this getting knocked down. Potentially, oh, and they turn their attention straight towards FHD and he's knocked. He's out. Yonks will have to hold on to him and he does for now. But no more shield for him either. No in his inventory either. So Seven Tour will win. This time EU outfrags ME. As the match went on and eventually transitioned towards endgame, we could see players fighting at a very high capacity. But amidst all this chaos, Trulex and Queasy remained vigilant and were able to claim match number two. When round three began, almost right off the bat, we could witness some intense duels where Emat eventually saved the day. I think so strong and uh, Leo, we will rather, does have a shotgun destroyal. This is going to back up Emat, gonna try to get some shots. Oh, shot's not gonna connect. Finally, is he gonna come through? And Emat will get the return, knock there, and look at that player on the other team. They're so far away, it didn't matter. But in the end, that wasn't enough. And after yet another intense battle, the last two remaining squads went all in. Trying to make a play is in the zone though, has to try to dip out and get back into it. Mignon right there as well. Milan next eight will more than likely because his dumb flick is so low. Doesn't really have a lot to work with. They're going in. No, someone's gonna take that one. Mignon is gonna go down to Milan and they're just holding flick out. He is dancing because he knows his fate is elimination. Milan and X8 will win the game. Moving into match four. First duels happened even before the storm started to converge on the players. However, as time went on, Cece and his partner Bizzle took on the initiative and battled against the clock relentlessly to gain the upper hand. As a result, claiming the well-earned victory royale. And just stay alive, get those eliminations. Seats and Bizzle don't have a lot of mats. They've got 20. This is more than enough shots coming through. Save team may try to make something happen. They get both, they get one, they get two, they get four, the victory out, and more. This leads us to our final match of the day. And just as you might have expected, it was once again full of some serious action. This fight, look at how long it's taking it. Look at how many matches. Felix is not in the box that they want to be in. They went down. The war of attrition looks to be won by default in Fez. And with that box up, they try to go for it. And one pop to the face. Fez tries to help out default, but default takes that even. However, in the end, it wasn't Fez and default to take home the victory. It wasn't even a standing duo, but a clutch performed by Tripper that earned him and his mate a tasty win. Made a great play there, 1v1 to Pern, does have the plot for some heal off a win no matter what, does he have the match, so hops into zone, and the zone will take down Yonks. No elimination, but they get the victory royale. And just like that, day one was over. But looking at the scores, it certainly wasn't a dull one. 
So stay with us as day two also hid a couple of surprises up its sleeve. I don't know about you, but it's pretty impressive watching how fast these players build in Fortnite. And it's time to meet one of these pros as we have Creo joining us here for a quick interview. So the thing that made me get into Fortnite is when I was like 16, 17, when it came out, I was just playing because it was like the biggest game, you know, everyone's playing it, Ninja and CDN the Third and Dakotas. I used to watch a lot of their YouTube videos and that's what got me into it. And then I started just playing with my friends and then doing kill races, which is like you go into a pub game and then you see who can get the most kills. And yeah, that's basically what got me into it. In the future, I definitely want gaming to be involved somehow. Uh, if I can't somehow acquire a job, if uh, say I can't be a creator, obviously the goal is to be a streamer the whole time or a competitive player. If there's another big game that comes out, yeah, that's the goal. But if that's not possible, I'd like to be maybe like a general manager for an esports team or work in the gaming industry somehow, whether it be for like a peripheral company like. Logitech, Steel Series, Razer, or even, I don't know, maybe I'll work for BBG, which is my current org right now. I think if you are a, any type of wanting to be a up and coming pro, up and coming content creator, you want a future in the gaming industry, you need to like manage all your socials well, because all it can really take is one big video to blow up your things. I think I had 5,000 subscribers for like one month and I was just uploading consistent, consistent, consistent and I had one good video that blew up and it got like a million views on my YouTube and that's what like started the YouTube and then after that I was consistent, consistent and all my videos were doing really good, my growth was good and I stopped for like one month and then after that like you fall off the algorithm and then your growth stops so you just gotta be consistent with that because it takes one thing. Same with TikTok. TikTok is a really big platform right now that a lot of people can blow up off on it's really, I think if you're just consistent or you have the right content and you follow the right, I guess, algorithm, it's really easy to blow up. And then when you do that, your following will transfer to other social medias. Um, yeah, as long as you grind your other social medias, those are important. I think the main two ones right now are YouTube and TikTok, obviously also Twitter, but I think uh, Instagram isn't as big as the other ones uh, for Fortnite, of course. I really like the new season for competitive because obviously there's the launch pads they added they took away the makeshift of the primal gun so that's really good for competitive and you know launch pads kind of add that rng i mean delete that rng factor of not having movement because you could be in storm getting griefed by a team that's out of your control and then you are just stuck in zone and you can't get out but now you can launch pad out you can launch pad out of fights if you have a far zone you can launch pad out uh the only thing i would say i don't really like about this season is that there weren't that many map changes i wish that they would have added more new pois because it's always like the same trios landing at the same spots and it's kind of hard for I guess new people or newer trios to, you know, go and get a new spot. So a, a new map would have been nice, but if I were to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give this season an 8 for competitive. The Gamer Without Borders, no, that is not my first charity event. I did one, I think, seven, eight months ago for a Samsung charity event, and we just did the creative maps, and we streamed on the Samsung thing, and we acquired donations for the stream, and it went to a good cause. And yeah, I, I just, I think charity streams are always a good thing to do. Charity events are always a good thing to do. It's uh, promoting a good cause and whatnot and giving back to the community. So yeah, I think uh, the most fun part of like events like these, aside from just, you know, the charity and the good cause is that everyone gets to get together. Uh, it's not just, you know, all NA, all EU. It's like NA, EU, and people from other regions are going to come and compete. Uh, content creators are going to compete. It's not all competitive. Sometimes it's good to like get a step back and not have it be super sweaty and all these sweat sweats just w keying in the lobbies and stuff and then we you know, just get to have fun with everyone and it's a good viewing experience for um you know all the players and just going back after and watching these events and like watching the bot and watching the casters and stuff that's like also really cool to see like when you see yourself and seeing like everyone in the stream having a good time in the bot it, it, that, those are always nice things to see we got to hear from Creo, but now it's time to meet uh, another person, our second guest on today's show. He also lives in the U.S., and he's also a contender here at our Fortnite Elite competition at Gamers Without Borders. Let's check in with CC. Fortnite being my primary game came pretty easy. So I played H1Z1, which was previously a pretty 
I'd say a pretty big battle royale. So I had like two years of experience in that, and then this game came out and all the numbers were higher, you know, the competitive, the competitiveness of the game was higher than an H1Z1, so it just was a no-brainer to switch. Uh, at the time, there wasn't like a Valorant or like even like a CSGO that was even a close thought that I could go, go, could go to play instead, but yeah, Fortnite was just, it was just a no-brainer. I think the best aspect of being able to stream the game and also play at a high level competitively is that I can spread my knowledge across thousands of people every single day. Um, the fact that, you know, the knowledge that I have doesn't have to be just stuck to me and and that I can share it with that many people is just insane to me. So I'm, I'm happy to be able to do it. I actually think this is probably one of the better competitive seasons. Um, I don't think there's too many annoying things or broken things. I, I think that this pump meta is perfect for the game. I, I think I'd love to see this for seasons on end, although we know that it's going to change. I think I, I really like this meta. Maybe it's a different standpoint for me since I'm not necessarily like always the person who's carried, you know, the spaz or, you know, the bigger shotguns in a, in a team game mode. But I think it's nice to be able to have a green blue pump, you know, competitive meta. We've never had it before. And so it's going to be interesting. Yeah. So I've been looking for a dual partner for this tournament for a little bit now. But uh, I think the biggest problem for me has been trying to find someone that I can really click with and just have a good time playing this tournament. After all, you know, it is for charity and I'm just trying to have a good time. So someone that I can maybe, you know, have a good time with, vibe with, but also have the chance to win with. So try to find that good combination right in the middle. But overall, it's been uh, it's been a rough hunting. My dream duo partner for this tournament would, I'd have to say it'd probably be Mr. Savage. I had a couple of tournaments I was able to play with him when I was on 100 Thieves. And he is just a stud, man. He is just, he is just, He's just crazy. I don't know how to explain it. Like hit I, I think that he's probably one of the one of the most wise competitive players. On top of him already having years in, on experience just by playing the game. It's just he, he's just overall the, the most well-rounded player in the game. So definitely Mr. Savage, but unfortunately said no. So Oh man, EU versus NA. That's a conversation that could go on for hours and hours and forever, honestly. I think that <clears throat> I think that EU players are better mechanically and more ahead in that sense, but the NA players are overall smarter and more consistent. And I think if you had an EU versus NA on a LAN, that you would see that it'd probably be very balanced out because the play styles wouldn't like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's not smart players in EU and that there's not mechanical players in NA. It's like both regions have great players, and I think it's just going to be you know first EU, second NA, third EU. Fourth and A. It's just gonna go back and forth. It's never no region is better. We're both just very competitive regions and we obviously you know one wants to be the best, but there can never be one. So yeah. Uh I'm not sure if this is my first charity event. I've definitely helped out charities before in the past, but this is definitely the biggest one I've ever been a part of, and I'm I'm very happy and thankful to be a part of it. I can't wait to potentially win a lot of prize money for my charity, so I'm very excited. Yeah, I mean donating to charities has always been something that I've done. Um, and it's something that I'm going to continue to do. Helping out a good cause is, is nothing to be ashamed of, and it's something that I think everyone should do, you know, at least once in their life, um, because there's always people that are in need, and especially when I get an opportunity like this to be able to give back, you know, any any sort of prize money to any charity is just uh, it's an incredible opportunity. So, charity tournaments, multiple charity tournaments every single month. I think I think that there should be you know at least a single charity tournament every single month because, like I said, there's always a cause that you can donate to. Um, and so it's never like, it's never going to be a negative coming out of it. Um, so I, I think, yeah, I mean, charity tournaments should definitely be regular. I love that CC knows the importance of charity events within gaming competitions. And speaking of which, we checked in with day one of our elite competition. Why don't we just go ahead and check in with day two now? All right, all right, all right. We have to admit, the first day of the Fortnite Elite Tournament here at Gamers Without Borders was a blast. Now it was time to jump into day two and see who had enough zest to win it and donate $375,000 to charities of their choice. The first match of the day took off with some magical actions from Michael. Into the box, Michael is trying to go. He isn't, and look at that, look at his shot from Michael to hop through. He predicted that so well. He said, I know you're gonna go there, so he hopped through the edit. But jumping like a goat wasn't enough to stop Flois from eight eliminations, which gave him and Pink that sweet first victory royale. 
From the very beginning of the second match, we could tell Pink was keen on repeating his teammate's success, but this time he was left out to rot. Close, but no cigar, as the Dane, Anus, instantly shattered his hopes for extra points. But Anas may be able to get a retrench there as shots come through. It's not going to be Pink. It's not going to be him. Anas with the chug cannon is going to clutch up the victory by a second and a half. The very end of the third match looked promising, again for Pink. With seven players left on the battlefield, we thought it's going to be a clash between him and Tripper. But in the end, Sebastian was the first to drop out. But let's not forget both of the Falcons were still in the game. They had to come down on someone, but it looked like Pink was their priority target who turned out to be a wrong pick at the end, as Aiden and Geruto were the ones who took it all. Geruto and Aiden, right now all they have to do is spam forward two builds left, and he's gone. The victory royale, and it's a quiet one for Aiden and Geruto. The final stage of the second to last match looked more like a bizarre game of peekaboo, with lots of players hiding in the bushes as well as in the sky. Half the lobby playing zone wars, or uh, zone rules. <laughs> And the other half playing season twos, <laughs> if there were three halves possible, Alvi and Niall. Yes! yes! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Nobody's going to notice. I guarantee nobody's looking at the sky right now. They're all looking for each other, like, in bushes and stuff. But Reet was the one who put the final nail in the coffin and busted both Trippern and Flecken and claimed his first win of the day. Reet has so many mats still left. He's going above the driveway screen and they take out Fleck and might have enough time for a shakedown too. The zone is moving so slow and they clap back, stop the content and stop the game in its tracks. It's Reed and his editor. We can always count on our friends, right? That's at least what Shiggy for, but couldn't really execute it for his buddy Chance the Rapper when the two showed up during the fifth match. Better luck next time, boys. Oh, help, help me, help me, help me. Oh, help me. In the lighthouse. Go. Yo, yo, yo. Shoot him, yeah, yeah. Yeah, chance. That's a robot. You weak as hell. <laughs> I ain't had no gun. <laughs> chance, get him. I'm dying. Come help <laughs> me. Bro, it's real people over here. You just got killed by a machine. Chance, help me, bro. Well, you're not dead. Bro. I'm coming. I'm dying. You gotta give me I'm in the lighthouse. I'm in the light. I'm in the. I'm in the lighthouse. Come on, hurry up, bro. I'm at 46. I'm dying. 44. Shut up. Oh, my God. You oh suck. <laughs> Terrible, bro. On the other hand, the last match turned out very lucky for Waze and his teammate Quinton. Even though the last moments looked again a bit like hide and seek, we saw that the chemistry between the boys was strong enough to end another big day of Fortnite with a win. Oh, a yellow stare to end the day. Ways. I mean, he's got the eyes, he's got the ears, he's got the nose and the wool power. Which gave them the worst known place to humankind, fourth. But we all know we're here for a good cause. So all that mattered was the fact that each player on that day played his part in donations, worth a grand total of $1.5 million. So I bet you're wanting to know who came out on top as our victors in the tournament. But unfortunately for you, that's coming up a little bit later on in the show. But fortunately for you, we got a little tricky video to show you as we have Creo and Cece going head to head in our tricky quiz. You can get the dab in the season four battle pass. I I'm gonna have to say that's false because I'm pretty sure the dab came out in season three. And I think it's a trick question. I know it's definitely in chapter one. I think it honestly was the battle pass with the Black Knight, and I think the Black Knight came out season three. So I want to say false. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's false. I'm gonna go with false. Oh, okay. Okay. Moisty Merman is a character based off a movie. Wait, that sounds like it might be true, but there's no way. There's no way Fortnite would base something off a movie like that. That is 100% false. Nah, that's definitely false. That's definitely false. That is true. Okay, I did not know that part. That is... You learn something new every day. Before its official release, first Fortnite teaser trailer was revealed nine years ago. Uh, yeah, that's... Wait, no. Wait, 
That's true. That's true. I swear, not the Battle Royale wasn't teased nine years ago, but I think Fortnite was around nine years ago. It seems like a long time ago, but it really wasn't. I'm, I'm going to say that's true because I think Save the World was, was a game. So Fortnite technically was out nine years ago. I think games take that long to develop, so I'll say true on that one, yeah. Haim comes from the same set that goes by the name Shiro. I don't even know what Haim or Shiro is, so this is just a 50-50. Uh, I'll say false. Sounds like it's true. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure pretty sure Haim does come from the same set. Okay. <laughs> there are four different outfits of fish stick that you can buy. Okay, I'm a <clears throat> I'm a fish big, fish stick expert. You know, I'm a big Benji fish fan. You know, I've used this code obviously, so I had to buy the skin. But there's the World Cup one. There's the pirate one. There's the regular one. I think there's just three, but they usually come out with skins as four. I'm just gonna go with my gut and say false. There are four different outfits that you can buy. Now there's like one with some goggles. So yeah, that's de that's definitely true. That's definitely true. Okay. Zoe wasn't available in game for some time because of the game bug. I think that's false. Yeah, that's true. I'm pretty sure I don't know exactly what was bugging, but I know there's been some skin bugs in the past. I'm pretty sure it's something to do with Zoe and her hair or her legs, uh, something like that. Uh, it was a long time ago. I'm not gonna lie. It was like a good year and a half, two years ago. So I'm gonna say that's true, though. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. Tier 100 skin in the season seven was the Omega skin. No, that was not the tier. No, no. I'm pretty sure that's true. Yeah. Tier 100 of season seven was not Omega. I'm pretty sure Omega was in season four or five because that was the season with Dusty. I don't know. It, it, these are <laughs> these are tricky questions, but I'm just have to say that's that's definitely false. Oh, OK. I all I know, all I remember was that it was the 100 for one season. There are five hot bar slots in Battle Royale. That's definitely true. I know that's true for a fact. So you have your pickaxe. And then your AR, your sniper, your shotgun, minis, and a big pot or something. You got your your two guns, you know, maybe your your white heels, and then your two shield items, and that's five. So, um, unless I did my math wrong there, so that's definitely true. So if you consider the pickaxe slot a hot bar slot, there's six. But if not, I mean, I guess you wouldn't consider. It. So true, there's five. In Fortnite Season 7, you're able to play as Rick from the Rick and Morty show. That is definitely true. You're able to play as Rick Sanchez, and you're able to talk with Rick Sanchez in-game, which is actually pretty sick as well. So, definitely true. If that's this season right now, then that is true, yeah. Yeah. I'm really bad at remembering, like, what, when, what stuff happened, yeah. Another draw in our tricky quiz. You know what? How about they settle it in Fortnite instead? I might actually have a victor finally coming out in this one. For all of you who might have missed out on the action live, though, that happened in our last week, it's time to take a look at who won our Fortnite Elite competition here at Gamers Without Borders. The last few days were pretty hectic in retrospect, but with no time to waste, we dive right into the third day of the Gamers Without Borders Fortnite Elite Tournament. Today's final performance will decide who can finally call themselves the ultimate champion. With the incredible performances that were put up by Flois and Pink the previous day, they had quickly become the people's favorite. But let's not beat around the bush. As the first match of the day, it looked chaotic. But known for thriving in the chaos, World Cup finalist Bad Sniper and Tommy claimed the first victory royale. Not water, it's raining bullets from high ground. Tommy and Bad Sniper haven't stopped, but Tommy. Oh, oh, oh. shot and goes down. Fenix might get traded as a result. It's all up to Mini and Bad Sniper head to head, but Bad Sniper had the damage the entire time. Just before the end of the second match, it looked like Trippern and Flecken might actually be able to assert dominance over the server. Massive opportunity right now, but it's gonna go three ways, hyping a wavy in between two teams. Trippern and Flecken gonna go in, and the other side is gonna say, okay, you guys got this, it's all you. Unfortunately for them, ETQ and his inseparable companion, Wakey, had a different idea. Making sure no one can really touch his body, get that siphon. Now Waze and Quinton, they'll look for a way to try to go and push in. The only thing that up top they have is a bandit or a slurp cannon as well. So it's both sides. Quinton's going to go for the wall. Oh, but he holds off and he's going to fall. No siphon given to him though. So that's very important. ETQ might have 
Yes, he just got the body. He got the body for Siphon and everybody falls to zone and it's Trippern and his teammate who end up coming through with the win. No, sorry, Wakey and ETQ end up coming through with the win. Long story short, game three was on fire with Trulex and Queezy turning up the heat with their bow and arrow. Ooh, a little sneaky log pad. Sneaky, sneaky. Wakey's like, I don't think I want to be a part of this fight anymore, especially because Trulix and Queezy have done such a fantastic job in this entire marathon of games. But they're pushing on this one. Trulix, they smell blood in the water right now, and it's going to be Wakey going down. Queezy getting the elimination here. Unfortunately, they flew too close to the sun. On the other hand, high ground plays from Lindgren turn out to be crucial in the 1v1 scenario. What does Falcon have in that chunk hit? And no builds remaining makes this almost impossible for them to win. There is a side boss really if they're able to get onto right there. Okay, so it does pull over land just a little bit. Seven HP, I end a seven X is just going to go down to zone. They try to break their way on through, but at that point, shooting would have been just a little bit faster. When we jumped into the fourth match of the day, everything was going as planned for most of our pretenders until our Swedish-Dutch duo decided to hunt Mr. Wakey Wakey once more. Now it's a 2v1 when it looked like, honestly, Wakey and company were going to win the game. Yeah, wow. Oh, my gosh. We do see Quinton go down there. Wakey. Oh, Wakey he just picking up the other elimination there too. Because there were already pretty tight results in the leaderboard, Lindgren bent over backwards to earn some extra points. Unfortunately for him, Alfie's appetite for those points was far bigger. Lindgren gonna find the shots, but they're not going to connect. Alfie is staying in zone, has more HP, knew that and knew they could play around that. Because when you get that elimination, you get that siphon, you're looking good. Without a majority win in any of the four games, Flois and Pink had only one chance left to repeat their success. Thankfully, they hit a stroke of luck in the last game. Well, especially when you take a look at how little healing that Fenix really has left. Flois can just sit on the high ground right now, sit pretty, and wait for that zone to close in, but Flois doesn't want to take that chance, wants to go for the elimination here, starts to drop down. Flois looking for Fenix at the moment. Fenix, though, cannot touch that zone. It's going to be game over if that is the chance the case crowning them our ultimate Fortnite champions who in the spirit donated another $75,000 to gamers without borders aid partners so now we know how our champions pink and Flois beat the other duos and took home the title but let's find out which charity organization they donated their weddings to here at gamers without borders and more obviously about their win we got pink join us in the studio how are you doing man how does it feel taking home the title taking home all that money for charity you know how, how does it feel to be you know now done with it all and obviously being the, the best of the best here uh it feels nice especially because it's for charity and we're donating it to unit UNICEF, which is what we both wanted to donate to, so it's a nice feeling. Yeah, I, I'm imagining, you know, in, in a lot of these heats, a lot of these days, you were you guys were just having a great time, you know. What was your guys' focus in, in a lot of these matches? What were you going into? Just like, hey, let's just have some fun. Did you want to win the whole thing? Were you just trying to beat out certain people in particular? What was, what was your guys' mindset? Uh, our mindset was just to take all the games as serious as we can. But on the last day, we were doing kind of bad, so we just kept WK. <laughs> and so we kind of died, but then the last game, the W King paid off and we got an 18 kill win. I would love to have or to be able to have a bad third day and still come out on top. I mean, I think you guys won by like 70 something points. So you definitely like put down your dominance when it came to the entire event. But overall, what's your experience been like here at Games Without Borders? I mean, if they were to ask you again, say, hey, Pink, we want you to come defend your title with Flois, would you come back again? Yeah, probably. I played last year as well with someone called Paddy, and we did decent as well. I think we come second, second and eighth, and we made quite a lot of money as well. So I'd definitely do it again. All right, cool. Okay, well, what's what's in the future for you? You know, for people out there that want to watch your career, you know, blossom as it's doing. What's like the next events coming up? What are you what are you focusing on now with your future in Fortnite? Uh, Trio FNTS is soon as well as Trio Cash Cup, so right now I'm just focusing on that. Uh, the solo FNCS Grand Final All-Star just happened, but didn't do the best in that. So I'm going to try my best to place in trios. Okay, well, That's very cool, focus. man. I want to give you a chance to give a, a shout out to your fans, you know, friends, family, anything you want to, or anyone you want to give a shout out to in particular before we do end off this interview. 
Uh, shout out Flores. That's my duo right now. And yeah, that's, that's all. Thank you so much, Pink, for joining us in the interview. We're really excited to see what you do in the future of your career. That's it for today, but make sure you guys tune in next week as we'll be breaching into some Rainbow Six action. My name is Jason Kaplan. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.